With Halloween just days away, Lake Orion residents had plenty of opportunities to get into the spirit of the season with parties, parades, and trick-or-treating throughout the community. The Lake Orion Dragons regular season has come to an end, but how far will the team go in the postseason? A longtime Lake Orion business broke ground on a parcel of land on M24 that will be the new home of Scalnick Ford. And 11 teams of filmmakers took part in ONTV's 11th annual Wildwood Film Festival, which teams came out on top. Stay tuned to find out. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and much more on this edition of ONTV News. Although Halloween is officially celebrated on October 31st, residents of Lake Orion have been celebrating the season since mid-September. Over the past several weeks, there has been no shortage of spooky events for local families to enjoy. On the evening of Wednesday, October 16th, Lake Orion families were invited to come to Children's Park for the DDA's annual Halloween extravaganza. Representatives of the DDA handed out cider and donuts, and participants enjoyed music, games, and activities were handed a map that led them to 30 businesses in the village that were handing out treats and goodies. So everybody loved, they're like, wait, they're coming to my business? That is fantastic. And again, the DDA mission, we want to introduce our community to the businesses that we have in downtown. So we hope that having these great activities, the families will get to see the great stores and shops and restaurants we have downtown. And um, hopefully they'll come back and be a regular customer. The Children's Halloween Parade is a tradition that goes back decades, but came to an end in 2019 when COVID arrived in 2020. After a five-year hiatus, the parade returned to the village. We have not had the parade since COVID, and there were some meetings that we had talking to different folks who were like, okay, well, maybe it's something we try to launch next year. And I kept hearing so many that were stating, no, we'd love to see it back. So we got all of the pieces and parts put together and all the conversations to happen and uh, we got the parade pulled off. So they meet at Village Hall, they're walking down Anderson Street um, and it steps off at 6 o'clock and they'll come right to Children's Park. I love it and you know it's one of those things where um, Lake Orion community and those that come to Lake Orion are so supportive of the different events that we do. And uh, I think Halloween's always a favorite one for people to come out and get their kids dressed up. Um, you can't go wrong with, with uh, donuts and cider too. So it's just a great activity in the fall. We're so blessed to have fabulous weather tonight. Um, so we're very happy with the turnout. The DDA is already gearing up for the upcoming holiday season with the Sing and Stroll Tree Lighting Ceremony scheduled to take place on Thursday, November 21st. For more information, visit downtownlakeorion.org. Just a few days after the Halloween extravaganza, the fun continued with another popular event. On Friday, October 18th, Orion Township Parks and Rec invited families to come out to their annual Boo Bash event at the Orion Center. Participants were asked to pre-register for one of three time slots, 5, 6, and 7 p.m. Boo Bash is back again this year. We're here at the Orion Center. We have, oh my goodness, 150 kids coming tonight with their parents, so we're going to have quite a crowd. Kids can expect to see, let's see, they'll go on a hay wagon ride, they'll go to the pumpkin patch, they'll go through our trick-or-treat street with our carnival games and our vendors. We have a live bat encounter, we have a bubble mania, we have everything going on tonight. Oh, and a face paint or two. <laughs> a little bit of everything tonight, Joe. The first Boo Bash took place in 2008 at Friendship Park. It moved to the newly opened <laughs> Orient Center in 2012. The event depends on volunteers and staff to make it happen every year. Well, we've got the You Before Me volunteers. That They're out of Oakview Middle School. They come and help us out with a lot of our events like this. So they're here volunteering. They're running our carnival games. And then I have the 17 other businesses that just decided they wanted to grow their business and get some exposure. And they came on out and they've set up tables and they're going to pass out candy and be part of our event this year. Why do we do it? Well, look at this. Doesn't this look like so much fun? That's why we do it, because it's fun. It's great to get out with your family, with your kids, and do something that's safe and easy and local. Um, that's why we do it, because it's just so much fun, Joe. 
as you may have heard, Orion Township Parks and Rec are moving their offices to the recently acquired Great Lakes Athletic Center, which means this will be the last boo bash to be held at the Orion Center. This will be the last boo bash at the Orion Center, I guarantee. This is the last one here. Where we'll go from here, I don't know. We've had discussions. It might move to the new facility on Baldwin Road, GLAC. It might move to Camp Agawam, might move back to Friendship Park. We're not sure what's going to happen. We'll see. We'll figure it out when we get there. For more information about upcoming Parks and Rec events, be sure to visit OrionParks.com. The AU Special Needs Foundation was established as nonprofit 501c3 in 2021. Their goal is to host events that provide a fun and safe environment for those with special needs and their family members. On the evening of Saturday, October 19th, approximately 200 costume characters came out to Friendship Park for an AU Foundation's annual trunk or treat event. More than 30 vehicles were adorned with spooky Halloween decorations and law enforcement and firefighters got in on the fun as well. Participants enjoyed pizza and breadsticks and even got a mini pumpkin. The event was free to the public. We have uh, people from the community that come out and local businesses that help support us. We have around 150 to 200 kids that come through. We have a lot of donors throughout the community, local businesses and local the fire department, uh, sheriff's department is here and everyone helps out and donates. Approximately 15 students from Oakview Middle School's You Before Me group were on hand to volunteer their time, helping wherever they were needed. Being kids with special needs, I think it just gives them a really good perspective on life, and I think it just helps them overall. Um, just they just they feel good. They feel good about themselves, and they feel good about helping others. And I just hope that they have found the passion to help others, and I hope this is something that they continue throughout the rest of their lives. The AU Foundation has also hosted an Easter egg hunt and a summer barbecue, and last year they took part in the Orion Lighted Christmas Parade. For more information, visit AUSNF.org. Orion Township's Miracle League Field celebrated its grand opening in August of 2019. Since then, athletes with special needs have been able to play sports in a barrier-free environment. On Saturday, October 26, organizers celebrated the end of the fall ball season with a Halloween party at Miracle Field. The season kicked off on September 19th and came to an end on October 19th. 89 players made up of six teams and all were invited to wear a costume, take part in games and activities, and enjoy food and refreshments. Uh, this season was so much fun, and we had great weather for it for the most part. It got a little chilly today, but um, for October, it was incredible that a lot of the kids who had played during the summer wanted to keep playing and they continued into the fall and then we also got some new players who had just heard about the league and are, are on board for hopefully even the summer so they come out here they have a great time playing baseball in this uh, community of excitement and energy and love that uh, brings them together and every week is just so positive and so exciting now just because the baseball season has come to an end that doesn't mean the athletes get to rest this winter how does hockey bowling and pizza party sound but we're also doing a couple things in the off season, which is pretty exciting. We're doing we're piloting a hockey program, uh, which starts November seventh, and uh, we are doing some pizza parties in the area. Uh, Orion Township has uh, helped us uh, locate a, the at the Orion Center this first one on November eighth. It's a, just a pizza party for our kids to get together and have fun, and then bowling kicks off in January. So we're we're doing all sorts of things. There's a lot going on all year long, and of course, the baseball season returns on June 7th. For more information, visit michiganmiracle.org. You can also find them on Facebook as Miracle League of North Oakland. Over the past several decades, Lake Orion residents have seen a lot of businesses come and go, but there is one business that has been a fixture on Lapeer Road for six decades. Although they aren't leaving the community, they will be experiencing a major change in the upcoming year or two. On the afternoon of Thursday, October 24th, Skalnick Ford's staff, family and friends gathered on a parcel of land on M24 near Scripps to break ground on a brand new state-of-the-art dealership. The event coincides with Skalnick Ford's 60th anniversary. Oh, it's just a big event for our employees and our family, obviously. Uh, it's great to be able to do this in Lake Orion. Uh, I've been here all my life. I've seen a lot of changes. 
Uh, and, and I guess we've seen a lot of changes in our business. Uh, been able to grow with the community and from the community supporting us, this is what it brings, I guess. New life to the community, new projects. Uh, I think it's all good for Lake Orion, I really do. Skelnick Ford was founded in 1964, the same year as the Ford Mustang by George Skelnick. 60 years later, it's still family owned and operated by Richard and Stephen Skelnick. My father w worked for Al Long Ford for 17 years and in 1964 he bought uh, uh, Skelnick Ford. It, it was a closed dealership. Actually was owned by the Mosh family of all people. And uh, he started in 64. Uh, I started running the store in 76. Um, and now I have uh, my son Ryan and Trey that are uh, working for us. We have another company that Trey uh, uh, runs. And uh, yeah, we've been here a while. You know, we live in Lake Orion. Uh, my grandfather moved here um, in the early 60s, moved his family here, um, took over a failing uh, company, and you know, we're still here 60 years later. Um, so I think having uh, family-owned businesses that live in the community, work in the community, we volunteer our time in the community, um, is a more positive impact than maybe a, a national chain uh, coming into our town. So, um, but you know, on the other hand, uh, we wouldn't make it 60 years with you know all the support from our local community, of our customers. Uh, the local officials um, from Chris Barnett and his team, the board, the planning and zoning team. Um, this was quite the project to get it rezoned and you know get us to where we're here today. So we've received a lot of support from our, our local officials as well. So we're very thankful for, for them. Those at Skelnick Ford are hoping the new facility will open its doors in 12 to 14 months from now with the current dealership slated for redevelopment afterwards. For more information, visit ScalnickFord.com. Over the past several years, downtown Lake Orion has been thriving and bustling with activity. New businesses fill vacancies as soon as the space becomes available, and longtime businesses continue to attract customers from all over Oakland County. Recently, one downtown business experienced a change in ownership. On Thursday, October 24th, representatives of the Chamber of Commerce and Downtown Development Authority gathered at Amazing Petals to celebrate a new chapter in the history of the florist. Amazing. Okay. One, two, three. Amazing! Amazing. Woo! I could not have done any of this without the support of my friends and in my family, certainly, um, and the community. I mean, I, I am very blessed and very fortunate to have love and support all around me. One of the things that was important to me in purchasing a store was that it had a downtown community. Um, coming from Milford, I'm used to that. I, am, I, I love the, the passerbys that, you know, they go, they're walking, they're walking their dogs, they wave at me in the window in the morning. They, it's that kind of community. It's that, that's what I was looking for. New owner Kyle Hughes opened the doors to the public on June 3rd after taking over the business from Beth Hensey, who owned it for most of its 23 years of existence. So first of all, we have obviously all the flowers. We, you can make your own bouquets. We make it for you. Come in and design it yourself. Then you walk to, through towards the back. That's going to be your retail space where we have all kinds of gifts, candles, home accessories. Um, today there's some pop-ups, so a couple of fashions back there, but that's not something that we are going to have. And then as you continue to walk through, you're going to find our workshop where we can host up to right now 20 people for classes. So we're going to be starting to do um, different maybe wreath making, um, bouquet making. I would like to do prom bouquets with the girls when that season kind of approaches. So just different things like that. Amazing Petals will be offering classes and workshops within the next several weeks. For more information, you can call 248-814-9755 or visit AmazingPetals.com. The mission of ONTV is to empower community members and groups to create, communicate, and connect through television and video production. One of the ways they do that is by hosting a film challenge every fall. Now in its 11th year, the film challenge was more popular than ever. ONTV's Joe Johnson tells us which teams came out on top. 
On the evening of Wednesday, October 23rd, local filmmakers and their friends and family members arrived at GQT Oxford 7 Theater for ONTV's 11th Wildwood Film Festival. Things actually kicked off on October 17th when 11 teams arrived at the ONTV studio to receive instructions for the film Challenge. Then they had four days to plan, write, shoot, and edit a short film not to exceed 10 minutes in length. On October 22nd, a panel of judges viewed all 11 films and awarded points in categories like cinematography, sound, and editing. The films were shown on the big screen at the film festival and the winners were announced afterwards. And for the first time, two films received the same score and shared the second place award. The team known as the Fab Five earned $75 for their submission, Anatidiphobia, which is the irrational fear of being watched by a duck or goose. team members went to the ONTV meeting to discuss the requirements for our film and I think about half hour to an hour after we all met over teams on the school night for at least hour and a half two hours and just brainstormed we wrote down all these ideas and I believe it was our team member Camden who had suggested that we google anatidophobia took us a minute to put that in a talk to text and figure out how to say it and um, <laughs> And then, yeah, we crafted that into a whole storyline of someone, you know, having a motive of what to do with their day, but this damn duck keeps following them, and so, yeah. Writing a joke with my friends and then having that on the screen and seeing people laugh made me so happy. I like making people laugh, and it makes me happy to hear that other people were able to laugh at something that we weren't. And then to hear your team name announced, what was that like? I was surprised. I didn't think we were going to win. I wasn't in this to win. I was just like, oh, Film Fest, I'm going to participate in this, so it'll be fun. But seeing that we won, it was just so exciting. It was really crazy, because I, like, I know the movie is like, really short compared to all the other ones, but it was just fun seeing like everybody react to it and like, you know, actually like my work, so that was good. What was your reaction when you heard, okay, there's a tie for second, and then your team name was announced? I was not expecting that to be honest. Like I thought we just like did this for fun, honestly. And then like you know like it'd be cool to place, but we didn't actually like I didn't expect me to place, but then we did. And so it's weird that I got placed like tied with the other maze movie, and we got second compared to you know the top movie, which was even greater. So tying for second place was the film Death in Baseball, produced by Vincent Martacci and Cal Green of Cine Films. The team took first place in 2022 and 2023. Dad prioritized you. He saw your talent, your skill. He saw how fierce you were. Your love for the game. Same love that he had for it. I think me and Cal are both kind of dealing with grief this year. And I think that was kind of a trend that we wanted to really focus on. Um, and also we wanted to do something really fun. We liked the idea of uh, having Cal play the same, uh, two people. <laughs> it was really, we thought it would be a really fun looking to do. That's what I say, I actually teach videography at a school and I always say if you have a camera, you're already there. Make films. If you have the time to do this, you should do it. It's super fun being able to make a film within these parameters. Oh, it's a blast. Do it. And named the winner of the 2024 Wildwood Film Festival was the team known as Team One, who produced the film It Just Takes One, about two students who form a friendship after experiencing loss. The first place finish netted them $140. Four years. Four years ago, I lost my best friend in a school shooting. Blake and I became friends playing Little League here. We just got along so well. And over the years, we grew closer and closer and closer, and we just had each other's backs, you know? We wanted to make a film that really kind of just impacted and touched people, you know, that would help just make them feel good at the end yes. of it. Together, collectively, yeah, there is a good background, and we just like to make film. We have the passion for it, so I think we just, all hunkered down five days and we we said hey let's let's knock it out let's do what we can and let's make it as good as we can something we want to be proud of and something that people will enjoy watching 
I'm seeing it, and it, it came out better than I could have imagined. It was great, and I had such a fun time filming it. It was great to see us get number one. I was nervous, but it, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I was super excited to uh, have everything that we put together over these past five days. It's been very chaotic and uh, like just kind of stressful, really, because it was Monday night, came down to chop time, and we didn't think we were going to finish it, but we finished it. Yeah, we did, and I was I was just very excited. You know, with the time that we had and the fact that we were able to put out something that we are all so proud of, I think I'm speaking for all of us with that. That you know, it, it felt it felt really good to have five days and just put all our ideas into something and really get one collective piece of art, and it, it was really cool. Congratulations to the winners and to everyone who submitted a film. All of them can be found on YouTube on the Orion ON TV channel. For information about upcoming classes and events, or to view videos on demand, you can visit orionontv.org. In Oxford, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. Thanks, Joe. And finally, the Lake Orion Dragons varsity football regular season has come to an end, but that doesn't mean the Dragons are done quite yet. ON TV's Joey Tysick brings us the highlights of the Dragons' final game against Celine and looks ahead to the playoffs. On the evening of Friday, October 25th, the 6-2 Dragons hosted the Celine Hornets in the final game of the regular season. As the first quarter came to an end, Lake Orion had methodically moved down the field. On the first play in the second quarter, Lake Orion was facing a second and five on Celine's 10-yard line. Quarterback T.R. Hill is under center. He takes the snap, rolls right, and hits number 88 Ryan Rochelot at the back of the end zone for the score. Will Hoffman's extra point gave the Dragons a 7-0 lead early in the second. It was a defensive battle most of the way with both teams coming up empty drive after drive. So let's go to the fourth quarter. The Hornets are facing a second and five on the Dragons 20 and threatening to score. Quarterback Tommy Carr is in shotgun. He takes the snap and the pass is tipped by number 35 Alex Hensley at the 10. Senior Grady Harbin lunges for the ball and comes up with the interception at the two yard line with nine and a half minutes left in the game. With just over four minutes remaining, the Dragons are desperately trying to run out the clock, but a fumble brings up fourth down and Lake Orion is forced to punt. With Celine facing a fourth and 10 on their own 20, the game is on the line. Carr is in shotgun. He feels the pressure, scrambles, and his pass sails high, but tight end Lincoln Keys climbs the ladder and somehow brings down the ball. He turns up field, gets a block, and goes the distance 80 yards for the touchdown. Un. Believable. Then, instead of kicking the extra point to tie things up, the Hornets go for two. Carr hits keys and he plunges into the end zone to give the Hornets the lead with three minutes left in the game. And that's how the game would end, eight to seven in favor of the Hornets. We spoke to Coach Chris Bell after the game. You, know, you play Celine, we knew it was going to be a good game, and you know, for probably fans, but for us it was ugly. I mean, their defense played great, but. You know, we get a field goal blocked, we miss a field goal. We have so many possessions down deep, we don't capitalize on. Our ball handling was awful. I mean, we were moving the ball, and then we would fumble a snap, or we, it was, it was, it looked like week one stuff. I mean, week nine, this stuff shouldn't be happening. So I just, I don't know what it was, but our just, our attention to detail was not good. It cost us offensively, and we let them hang around. We had chances to put them away, and we let them hang around. So that, that's on us. I mean, it was, you know, they, they're a good team, they're well coached, they got good kids, but uh, we had a chance to put this thing away, and shame on us, we didn't. And, that, and that, you know, the lesson here is it's week nine, you do the stuff in the playoffs, you go home. There's a lesson, okay? The, the, the second season starts. You know, this was a good game to hey, play a high caliber team, get us ready for the playoffs. Physically, we did fine. I thought our, I thought our uh, defense played great, but we got to clean up special teams and we got to clean up the, the self imposed mistakes that we're having on offense that are putting us in long area situations. Despite the loss, the Dragons advanced to the playoffs and will host the Clarkston Wolves in the first round. Lake Orion defeated Clarkston 20 to 13 on October 11th. Celine will travel to Northville to take on the Mustangs on November 1st. From Dragon Stadium, I'm Joey Tysick reporting for ON TV Sports. Thanks, Joey, and good luck to the Dragons. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ON TV News. On behalf of the hardworking ON TV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.